Hello and welcome to Focus on Israel and the Palestinian Territories. I am Paul Calvert. Leviticus 16, verse 6 to 10 says this, Aaron will present the bull as a sin offering to make atonement for himself and his family. Then he must bring the two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat will be sacrificed to the Lord and which one will be the scapegoat. The goat chosen to be the sacrifice to the Lord will be presented by Aaron as a sin offering. The goat chosen to be the scapegoat will be presented to the Lord alive. When it is sent away into the wilderness, it will make atonement for the people. This is talking about the Day of Atonement, the most holiest day in the Jewish calendar. I caught up with Colin Ross, the vice principal of a Makar Atikva school in Jerusalem, and I asked him, what is Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. That means it's, well, it is the most holy day in the Jewish calendar. Um, many, many Jewish people in Israel and throughout the world fast on Yom Kippur. In fact, many, uh, even non-religious, apparently non-religious Jewish people will fast because it's the, the traditional practice for, for the nation to go without food and often without drink uh, for 24 hours, 25 hours in fact, just in case, um, in case they get it wrong. So 25 hours. Um, during that, uh, that, that day from before sundown to after sundown the following day. Now, your school here is situated next to a very busy road. We can hear the traffic now. Uh, what would this road be like on Yom Kippur? Silence. There's absolutely no traffic travels at all in Israel? Certainly in this area, which is very close to uh, an Orthodox religious Jewish neighborhood, uh, there will be no traffic. Um, there may even, if there was a danger of traffic, and I don't think there is in this particular neighborhood, uh, there'd be vigilante groups of, of young Jewish people on the streets making sure um, in no uncertain manner that cars didn't pass down that street. Now, the Old Testament talks about two goats. Uh, for Yom Kippur. Are they still used today? And, and what is the, the relevance and the meaning with that? Well, the, um, the book of Leviticus talks about two goats being used at Yom Kippur at the Day of Atonement. One of them would have been a, a sacrifice in the temple, and the other one went into the Holy of Holies with the high priest, who only on that day of the year was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. And uh, as part of the ceremony for, for Yom Kippur, the high priest symbolically confessed the sins of the nation with his hands upon the head of that goat, and at which point one of the other priests would be taking, would take the goat out of the temple, out of the Holy of Holies, out of the temple, uh, out of the city, into the desert, and the goat would be released um, as a symbol of the cleansing of the sins of the people. Is there still any sacrifice made today? There is no sacrifice because there is no temple. A lot of the um, biblical sacrificial pattern assumed a place to do it, assumed a holy place, a tabernacle and later a temple in which those sacrifices would take place. Since the destruction of the temple in AD 70, there's been no uh, no systematic sacrificial system. And a lot of the rabbinical um, work has been done to, to replace the sacrificial system, to replace those laws which couldn't be fulfilled because there was no temple to fulfill them in um, with a whole lot of domestic duties, uh, domestic commandments that apply to the household and the individual rather than the, the corporate nation. Uh, and so many of the things that are done today in Jewish homes um, bear very little resemblance to the biblical pattern because the biblical pattern can't be fulfilled. Now, as a Messianic believer, what's your prayer for the Jewish people at this time of Yom Kippur? As a Messianic believer, I believe that Yeshua, Jesus, uh, is the fulfillment of the law. And specifically at Yom Kippur, it's so blatantly obvious that Yeshua, who, uh, who went to the cross and took upon himself our sin, is playing the part, has played the part of that goat that was taken out into the wilderness. And not only, I mean, the, the goat was taken out into the wilderness once a year um, 
for the sins of that year, presumably. Now Yeshua has, has taken our sins once for all upon the cross. And so the, the cross was, if you like, Yom Kippur throughout history, fulfilling what, would, what was yet to come in terms of taking away the sins of mankind. And also, in a real way, doing what that goat had done symbolically and prophetically for all the centuries of the Mosaic law up to the time of, of Jesus. So Jesus has fulfilled the atonement. We speak of him as our, as our atonement. So we use the same terminology. Uh, and it's so exciting to think that, well, today the Jewish people wish each other in a sort of tentative, hopeful sort of way that there would be that would, there would be some sort of freedom from sin. There are there is the the kind of greeting, the annual greeting at this time of year. May your names be written in the book of life. We know, as believers in Yeshua, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. With the with the religious Jews today, it's it's a it's a tentative hope. We know it's already accomplished. And my prayer for for my people is that they would that they would be released into that. They would see it. They would have revelation. This Yom Kippur, that actually Yeshua has done it. There is assurance of forgiveness from sin, and it is through Yeshua, through the one who died once and for all to take their sins, our sins, everyone's sins upon himself. 